uh, what happens when somebody commits suicide okay um, <clears throat> Obviously, it's a difficult situation for a person when a person is committing suicide. Nobody commits suicide for no reason. Uh, people commit suicide only when they reach the extreme stage or state within their life. Uh, that's when a person commits suicide. Now, what Islam believes in anything, in any ruling that Islam has, any do's and don'ts, the purpose of do's and don'ts in Islam is for the benefit of the humans as a society. That's the, that's the bottom line. That's the maqasid, that's the maqsad of sharia. That's the purpose of the rulings. Why are the rulings made? The rulings are made for the benefit of the human beings. So that is the, the bottom line of any ruling. Now, before Islam gives a ruling and puts a condition and puts a punishment on that ruling, Islam is command, the Muslims are commanded to create an environment for that. For example, stealing is prohibited. Everybody knows it. Every society agrees with it. But with the punishment for stealing, Islam has a severe punishment of stealing, obviously after a certain stage. If somebody goes and you know uh, steals two loaves of bread, there's no punishment for that. Because the purpose of the stealing for that person was hunger. So if somebody is stealing something for hunger, there is no punishment in Islam. But if somebody is now institutionalizing stealing, he's, dis he's, he's making a plan, going to attack a bank, or at the gunpoint, taking people in, you know, into custody and then going to grab a lot of money. This is pre-planned attack, which can even take the lives of some people at the, at the bank. In such a scenario, even if the life is not gone of any person, even if no person is hurt, but that gang of thieves will be caught and will be given severe punishment. And if they have harmed somebody, then the punishment could go all the way up to the death penalty in Islam. The reason I'm mentioning this is, you need to know the situation and scenario. So before Islam prescribes do's and don'ts, and before it gives the punishment, there are certain conditions to be met. The conditions are, for example, the environment has to be created. Why would somebody steal in the need of money? So in Islam, if somebody is in need of money, what, do, what is Islam prescribed? Islam prescribes zakat and sadaqah. People who have enough money should give 2.5% of their savings as charity in the community. People who have given the charity, yet there are poor people, then you give sadaqah on top of that. You give more on top of that in order to help people. The Prophet encouraged, if you are going to help somebody who is, uh, what do you call, a uh, yatim, whose father has just passed away, for example, he or she does not, uh, the orphan does not have uh, any means. If you look after an orphan, the Prophet said, you will be with me like this in paradise. Why the Prophet is encouraging. If you help or assist uh, uh, an orphan, this will be the reward. Encouraging people to give more. If you look after a, a widow who, does not, who is a single mother, who does not have enough resources and is, is, has got a family to look after, and you assist that family, then the Prophet said that is better than a soldier who is uh, you know, uh, working all night to guard the city. This person who gives donation to look after a divorcee has much more reward than that, has much more reward than a person who is praying all night. A person who prays all night, the, la the last six, eight hours of the night, keeps awake and prays, there's a huge reward for that. But somebody who assists a single mother would have much more reward than that. So the Prophet is encouraging people to give charity. What happens with that? When you create an environment, the purpose of stealing would be reduced. Then the state, the government has to provide funding in order to look after the affairs of all people of the cities, all, all the citizens of the country. So nobody is in dire need. So nobody steals, nobody pre plans to do all of this. Yet if somebody does, then that's a don't and there's a huge punishment for that. So that's the criteria in Islam. So coming to suicide, the reason I took this in depth is, probably you all forgot the question as well. The reason we had to go to this is to try understand the steps that Islam takes. The step one is education. Step two is getting the society up to the mark. Then the third step is then the do's and don'ts come. And then the punishment and the reward comes. So for example, a suicide issue. Why does a person commit suicide? There are reasons for that. So in an Islamic society, in an idealistic Islamic society, what the purpose is, there should be a family. There should be brotherhood. There should be sisterhood. People should look after each other, support each other. Why do we pray five times a day? Why do we Muslims have to pray five times a day? Why do we have to go to the mosque? The Prophet said, if you pray in the mosque with the group of people, you get 27 times more reward. Why is there 27 times more reward? 
What is suddenly changing? I'm praying still the same prayer. What happens when I go there? Okay, apart from the spiritual benefits and added benefit is when you go to a place as a community, for example, here, the Melbourne Muslim as the group is here. Many of you who come here, you feel comfortable coming here. You feel welcome when you come here. You feel integrated when you come here. There's somebody to welcome. You feel friendly when you come here. If the environment is not friendly, you wouldn't be here. Right? And you wouldn't come in the second time if the environment is not friendly. So that brotherhood, that sisterhood, that, that bonding that you have assists people to reduce the purpose of the pathway that leads to suicide. Depression happens, anxiety happens, people commit suicide for various reasons, obviously, various different reasons. Some of those reasons are loneliness. Some of those reasons are because you can't trust anybody. Some of those reasons are because there is nobody to assist you. That's why you have all these hotlines for uh, suicide prevention. Why? Because if you don't have somebody, ring. Ring them. So in Islam, what happens is it creates all of that environment and then, then Islam says, don't commit suicide. It's prohibited in Islam. So a believer is expected. So you want to say? How does it work? Sure. Jazakallah khair. I'm, I'm coming to that. Jazakallah khair for adding that point. So now what happens is the Islamic ruling is don't commit pro, uh, suicide. So that's prohibited. So what happens now? You have been educated not to suicide. You have been given an environment not to commit suicide. You have the, the society, the government, the, the people, the scholars uh, are commanded to look after each other as a society so nobody is left alone to go through that trouble situation. Yet if somebody goes through that trouble situation, they are informed religiously that do not commit it because it's a prohibition. Vision. So it reduces, I wouldn't say a fixed percentage, but let's say 50% is reduced because it's prohibited. So if I'm a true believer, I would try to restrict myself not going into that. Yet if somebody commits, because we're all sinners, we all commit sins. Now if somebody still commits suicide, we do not shun the person. We do not abuse the person. Rather, one of the scholars, he said, those who have committed suicide and have passed away, pray for them. Make dua for them. Do maqfara for them. There is one instance where it is said that the Prophet ﷺ refused to pray for the person who committed suicide. So from this we come to know that the scholars or our general perception is that you don't pray for somebody who did suicide. No, that's not the ruling. The Prophet did not pray but the Prophet commanded the Sahaba to lead the prayer. So in Islam you have to lead the prayer. There is no restriction or prohibition for a person who has committed suicide or, or such that he has become a kafir, that he should be kicked out of the community. Um, what I mean by kicked out is he's, he's not going to be prayed upon. No, no, that's not the correct, that's not the condition. He is going to be prayed upon. Everyone is going to seek forgiveness for that person and going to stand firm with him or and the entire family or her and the entire family. But it is a prohibited act. So we are commanded to try ourselves, hold on from it. To the extent that some Sahaba even asked, some, the, some, some people even asked to the scholars, they said, if I'm in such you know, desperate situation, what do I do if I want to die? They said, make dua to Allah by saying, oh Allah, if my life is not good for me, give me death. But they said, don't directly say give me death. Don't pray for death and don't commit suicide. But if you feel you are in that desperate situation, the, the scholars, they said, pray that, oh Allah, if my life is not going to be good for me, then give me that. So as an alternate, not as, as the main fundamental prayer. So hope that answers the question that, that was asked there, inshallah.